Dr. Bob Stark. Uh, today's lecture is uh, talking about uh, interfaces in more depth. Uh, last class we talked about abstract classes and methods uh, and today we're going to talk about interfaces and um, if you think about classes and abstract classes and interfaces as, as a spectrum um, of, of things that, that, that are useful to you, you know, classes are concrete, abstract classes have some concrete elements to them. Sometimes they'll have uh, fully fleshed out methods and, and constructors and even data members and things like that, but you usually can't instantiate them. And then interfaces are on the other, other side that they can never be instantiated. Um, they don't have data members. Uh, they rarely have concrete methods, though they, they are allowed now. Uh, in the beginning, interfaces couldn't have concrete methods. So um, each one has a place and a, and a usefulness um, based on your needs. So uh, idea behind an interface, it's a set of common behavior uh, for classes, including unrelated classes. Um, and at its uh, most basic, an interface specifies one or more method headers. Method header is how the method call is made and the, its return type, uh, but not how it's implemented. So the header is at the return type, the name of the method, and its parameters, but no body. Um, unlike extending a class um, by inheritance, a, a class can implement more than one in interface, if you like. Um, and in doing so, it has to implement all methods specified by the interface. Um, and this last bullet point is important. It's, it's like signing a contract when you implement an interface, a contract where um, the implementing class agrees to provide that interface's functionality. Um, I often think about interfaces as kind of a mask a class can put on and it puts on that mask so that it can act like this interface type in, in certain useful situations. We saw that with comparable. A, a class would put on the comparable mask and in situations like where it needed to be sorted by, uh, by collections, um, that comparable mask would give it the ability to do so. All right, so let's look at this example. We have um, several USB devices, um, USB mouse, USB hard disk, USB printer, USB webcams, USB scanners. Does anybody use scanners anymore? <laughs> I think we all use, our, you, you, use uh, cameras now, but the idea is there. All these run off the USB protocol, so what behavior do the following objects share? Um, at the very least, every one of these things needs to be able to send data along the, the USB system and receive data back from the USB system. Um, no matter whether it's a mouse or a webcam, they both have to be able to communicate uh, along the USB system using those uh, simple primitives. So let's look at how the interface syntax uh, comes into play. It look, it's set up kind of like a class. And remember, it's common behavior for classes. Um, so we have public interface where keyword, where normally the class keyword would be. The name of the interface, and it's capital camel case like we, um, like we do with class names. We have a interface body, and then one or more method headers. So for our USB example, public interface USB interface body between the curly braces, and then we have our two method headers. Uh, our send would be void, and it takes uh, an array of, of, of bytes as its data, because well, that's what we usually do when we're um, sending and, re and receiving um, on such a you know basic kind of, uh, of interface. Uh, so we do that as arrays of bytes that because you can use an array of bytes to pretty much transmit any kind of data. Um, we also have a receive method. There's, it's, it doesn't require any parameters, but it does return an array of bytes. Um, so anything that implemented this interface must implement a send method to say to tell it what that class means by sending a, a, a 
an array of bytes. And it must also have a receive method to define what that implementing class means when it receives some bytes from the USB system. A um, couple things to note. Um, by default, methods in an interface are public and abstract. So they're exactly like abstract methods in an abstract class, um, but because they're in an interface, they're assumed to be public and abstract. Um, so we don't need to put those uh, keywords in. And that there is no method body uh, for these uh, abstract methods. Now let's look at how we can represent an interface in a, a UML class diagram. So once again, here's our interface in Java. In a UML class diagram, we have a box that looks kind of like uh, a class, except there's no um, middle uh, area for data members, because we usually don't have data members in, in, in an interface. Um, the name uh, is in the same place as a class, but it has um, this interface in angle brackets up above it, um, which is actually optional. Uh, their, their UML uh, is, is generous, and now that we have the, um, the two-box version uh, of interfaces, you can leave that out if you want to. Uh, but it's nice to put it in there just to make sure you know it's an interface. Um, so we have the class or the interface name area, and we have the area to list its public abstract methods. Um, so very similar to how a class looks in, in a class diagram, just without the area for the fields and attributes. All right, let's look at how a class will implement an interface. Start by saying public class, name of the class, just like normal, and then implements the interface in the header. Um, so like we had extends for inheritance, here we have an implements for um, implementing a uh, an interface. And inside the body of that class, we must override the method specified by the interface. In other words, we must write the method header and give it a body. Uh, if we don't, we'll actually get a compile error. So the implementing class must implement all non-default and non-static methods of the interface. And we'll talk about what default and static are in a minute, uh, but uh, all the abstract methods of the interface must be implemented. Um, if there's a default method or, or more, uh, we can override those if we want to. Um, we can't override the static methods if we have them. So this is what it would look like in UML um, for a class to implement an interface. So here is our USB interface. Here's the class that's implementing them. They're joined by a dotted line and an open arrow where the arrow points to the interface. So it looks similar to inheritance in UML, except the, the arrow uses a dotted line. So how do we use interfaces? Um, just like with inheritance, um, you can think about an interface in much the same way as you do a parent class with inheritance. Anywhere um, you, you have a, a class that implements an interface, you can use an object of that class where an interface type is expected. So an interface can be a data type. You can uh, use it as the type of parameters to methods. You can use it as the, the return type of a method. You can use it as the type of uh, a data member or a local variable, just like with classes. Um, of course, you can't instantiate an interface directly because it's not an object, it's not a, a class. But any class that implements that interface can be placed where that interface type um, is expected. Um, this is a very powerful reuse and, and software engineering um, component. So once you get into your software engineering class, we'll uh, you'll really see kind of the power of how, how these things work. They uh, allow us to isolate um, implement implementing classes away from, um, you know, other classes that need specific um, data types to operate. So here's an example. We have uh, an interact method that takes a USB data type as its parameter. 
So, um, you know, USB is an, is an interface. We can't instantiate that. But any of our classes that do, like USB printer, if we had a USB printer object, we could feed it to interact and it would work just fine. And here we have a couple, uh, couple of examples of two different things uh, implementing the USB. There's our interface, USB printer is implementing it, uh, USB drive is implementing it. And in our next slide, we have an example of using those things. So we're instantiating a USB printer object, we're assigning it to a USB data type. Uh, we could also assign it to a, a USB printer data type if we needed to. Um, here we have a USB drive object and we're assigning it to a USB data type because um, interfaces uh, are a great way to do polymorphism. Um, we could also have an array list of the interface type and we can add to it into anything um, that implements that interface. So here's the USB printer, here's the USB drive. Um, we can iterate it over, over those um, interface types, works just like we did uh, with uh, classes that extended a parent class, um, polymorphism works the, works the same way. Uh, the one thing we can't do, we can't instantiate the interface directly because it's not a class. So, um, things to remember at this point, uh, an interface specifies one or more method headers. Um, and again, the method header is the return type the method name, and uh, the parameters in their types. So those headers must be uh, implemented uh, in a class that implements the interface, meaning they must be given a body uh, in that class. A class can implement one or more interfaces. So unlike uh, with uh, inheritance, where we could only extend a single parent class, um, a cl a any class can implement more than one interface. Uh, you can implement as many as you need, um, which is a nice um, it's a nice compromise from languages that, that actually allowed uh, multiple inheritance. And think of implementing an interface like signing a contract where uh, the implementing class agrees to provide the functionality specified by the interface. So refresher on uh, the methods of the interfaces. Um, there's no constructors in an interface because it's not a class, so there's no way to, to, to construct it. Um, we don't specify the public in front of our methods. We can, but it's, um, it's ex extraneous and redundant, so don't do it. Uh, it makes your code simpler to leave that out. Most methods of the interfaces are abstract methods, um, meaning they have a header but no body, so don't use the keyword abstract because, again, redundant. Um, it can have concrete methods. This is uh, new as of the last few years, but um, so I don't tend to use them as much because I still remember how, to, how the old stuff works, but um, they can be useful. And the, the two types are called default methods and static methods. Um, concrete methods should not be commonly used. Um, they, they added default and static to, to cover some cases where it does make sense to put some default behavior into the, the interface, um, but most of the time we want to keep them as um, pure, as free of behavior as, as we can. Uh, interfaces can have fields, but they are implicitly uh, constants, meaning they are public, static, and final. So we can actually leave out the public static final because any field we put in there is already public static final. Um, an interface cannot have instance variables. So here's an example. Uh, our interface USB int max bytes equals 256. Note we're using the uh, naming convention for a constant because it is a constant. There's no we, we, it's not really any, any other way. And that's implicitly declared as public static final int max bytes equals 256. Uh, extending interfaces. So there is an inheritance of sort between interfaces. Um, one interface can extend another. Um, when we do that, 
the child interface inherits all the um, methods required by the parent and it usually adds some more on top of that. Um, the extended interface doesn't have to um, implement those methods, but a class that implements the extending interface must implement all of the methods from both the parent interface and the child interface. So here's an example. Uh, we have an interface, movable, meaning something that can be moved, and it has a move method that takes uh, x and y coordinates as, as integers. We also have an interface, gas-powered movable, presumably something that's, that can move that you know, is powered by gas, and it extends movable. So it's, it's an inheritance type relationship. Um, we've added in a constant for speed limit. We've added in a new um, method, miles per gallon. Here's another interface, electricity powered movable that extends movable. Um, again, it means it gets the move uh, method out of movable. It extends that with a speed limit constant and a miles per kilowatt hour uh, method. If we look at that in US, uh, UML, here's our movable interface, here's our gas powered movable interface, and it uses an inheritance arrow, not the dotted line, because this is an inheritance relationship between two interfaces. Um, so it uses a, sing a solid line with an open arrow, uh, and electricity powered movable does the same thing. Um, as I said before, a single class can implement multiple interfaces, even though it can only extend one superclass. And so here we have an example of a car doing both. Um, so public class car extends vehicle, and of course it can only extend one thing, but it implements gas-powered movable and comparable. So if we extend multiple interfaces, we separate them by commas. Um, because it implements gas-powered, movable, and comparable, it must implement both of gas-powered movable's uh, methods, the miles per gallon that it uh, specifies, as well as the move that it inherited from its parent. So that's where those are. It must also implement the compare to that came from the comparable interface. So here's a, a UML uh, diagram of, of that, um, what we just saw. Car extends vehicle, so it has the solid line arrow pointing to, to its parent class vehicle. It implements comparable directly, so there's a dashed um, arrow with, a, with the open arrow head pointing to comparable. It also uh, directly implements gas-powered movable, so it has the dotted arrow to that, and then gas-powered movable implements movable, which means that car transitively implements movable. So it must implement all the methods that are movable, it must implement all the methods that are in gas-powered movable as well. So some benefits of interfaces, and we you will see these more as you get into your, your uh, upper level classes. Um, they're a little more flexible compared to abstract classes. They uh, enable something called low coupling, meaning there is a much weaker relationship between two classes. Um, and in this case, weaker is better. Um, the weaker the relationship between two classes is, the more reusable either one will be in isolation. Um, and interfaces actually allow us to break those uh, those coupling dependencies between two classes. So classes implementing the same interface don't have to be related. Um, this is another example of low coupling, but they can be treated as if they were. Um, so for example, a dog and a car may implement movable so that we can move them around, but they're not really related in any other way. I mean, we wouldn't want to have car um, inherit from dog or dog inherit from car. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but interfaces give us a way to kind of put this mask on either one of them and treat them as if something that can be moved at any given time. Um, you'll see the interfaces used a lot in the Java API. Um, one, 
prime example is the list. So capital L list is an interface in Java. Um, we have been using its concrete class array list up to this point, but there's other implementations like, a, like linked list um, that can be used as well. Um, when you start looking at um, data structures and the performance benefits of, of one implementation of a structure versus the other, you know, it may, sometimes it will make sense to use linked list instead of array list or vice versa. Um, they do have different performance characteristics. By abstracting away and referring to them as the interface list, um, we can swap these things in and out as needed and play around with, with, the, with the performance. Um, so it's a useful thing. So comparison, inheritance versus interfaces. In inheritance, a superclass takes the data and behavior shared by its subclasses and brings those into the parent. Um, the, the subclass becomes a specialization of the superclass. It, the subclass is a, is a kind of the, of the parent. Um, typically an interface is for just a, a, few, a few small, uh, very specific methods to perform some very specific functionality. Um, superclasses and subclasses are normal classes with concrete methods. Um, they can be instantiated. Um, a, a, an interface specifies the behavior, but with some limited uh, um, uh, But for the most part, it, it does not provide concrete Im implementation. Um, super and subclasses can have any kind of field. They can have uh, public static final constants, or they could have private instance uh, methods as well. Um, in interface, the fields are always constants. Um, superclass, subclass can be ins instantiated unless it's abstract. Interface can never be in instantiated. Uh, subclass inherits all fields and public methods from its parent class. Um, a class implementing an interface has to uh, implement those specific methods. Uh, with the exception of object, every class has exactly one superclass, um, and uh, any class can implement um, as many interfaces as it likes. Uh, parent and classes are closely related. Um, these are an is a relationship. Um, interfaces may be Im implemented by a large group of classes that are unrelated. Um, again, an example that's comparable. Um, lots and lots of very different disparate kinds of classes will implement comparable. Um, so that we can sort them in a list, but those things are, but those classes are not going to be related. Okay, so uh, there's a class exercise on Moodle. Uh, I want you to go attempt that first, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Here it is. Um, it's under this week, and it's the in-class exercise. You've got to start a project and some things to go through. I want you to pause the video and do that now. Um, and, uh, and once you're done, come back here and I'm going to do a code through. All right, if you're back, I, I, I trust you've, you've attempted the um, in-class exercise on your own. I'm going to walk through it um, on my uh, version of it. So I'm going to minimize that. Let's see. In the model package, add an interface, shape interface with two methods, get area and get perimeter, both return double. Um, and that's what should fix our um, compile error here. So shape interface. All right, so we do a new interface and shape interface. It doesn't extend anything, but if you wanted to do extensions, you could you could add them there. So we needed a get area method, and we needed a get um, perimeter. Yes, get perimeter. Okay, now, just like a class, oops, we have to write um, appropriate comments here. Something like 
that. And we do document the headers in um, the interface itself. So it's the area of the shape. Spell builder. Nope. <laughs> it just means it's not in the spell check. So that's what our um, our interface should look like, uh, properly documented. And notice that got rid of my circle um, syntax area. Um, note that get area and get perimeter are already overridden in this one. All right, let's do a square that implements shape interface. Uh, variables, uh, double type, and constructor that takes length as a parameter, and overwriting records. Great, okay. Let's do our square. Square implements the shape interface. So notice it gives me a um, a syntax error that says you need to implement the uh, inherited abstract methods, and we've got an option to go ahead and fill in stubs for those. Um, we're not done. We're not ready to do that yet, but. Um, Let's get, since a square, all the sides are equal, we'll, we just need a single um, uh, instance variable. That's the length of the side. Uh, I believe we need a constructor. It takes that length. Yep. And length of the side cannot be... Um, negative so we'll have if the length of side is less than zero um, throw new new legal argument exception oops and then this dot length of side is the length of side now, I am leaving out all the, doc the, the method documentation here for brevity, but you would still be expected to do that. Okay, so we have a get area. Um, the area would be the length of the side um, times itself. And we also have a get perimeter, which would be four times the length of the side, like that. Let's see what else we need to do. Yep, okay. So we've overridden those, and I believe that uh, takes care of everything we need for square right now. Um, I should also have method comments up there, but we're going to leave that out for now. Note that I do not need method comments on get area and get perimeter inside the implemented classes. They will pick those up from the what we wrote here in the, the interface. All right, can we go to demo controller and let's see. Pull these back a little bit. There we go. So we're printing the, the total area of the circles. They've done that already. Um, we're going to do several vari variables of shape interface type, and each one is a square of a different length. Do an array list here of shape 
interface. Picking it up from the to do here. Import array list, import shape interface. Gotcha. Where the robots are. Okay. Cursor and we'll do that. We'll just do some. One of size one. Oops, I was supposed to do these as shape objects, wasn't I? Do a medium square, I'll make it a size five. And then let's print out the area and perimeter of everything in the list. So for shape interface, shape and the shapes list. Um, area equals shape dot get area double perimeter equals shape. Perimeter. And we're going to do a so, I, I like to make my, my lines as uh, short and concise as possible. So I'm going to put, put these things together in a string first and then print that out. Um, run that and see if everything comes out properly. Uh, Alright, so there's the area of my small um, uh, square, so the area of 1, which because 1 times 1 is 1, perimeter is 4 because 4 times 1 is, is 4, uh, the medium had a, had a length of 5, so squared is 25 times 4 is 20, uh, the big one had a length of 10, so squared is 100 times 4 is 40. So everything looks good. Let's um, throw our circles in here as well. Um, so I'm changing the types of, of those variables to be shape interface, which I can do it because uh, circle implements the shape interface, and it's polymorphic. I'm going to add those to my um, 
uh, my for loop as well. Just because we can, and we're playing around with stuff. Let's see, one ring has a circle, has a diameter of 1.54, or probably radius. And the other one has one of 100.2. So let's run and see what happens. There we go. It adds those things back in, in as well. All right, uh, part four, we'll create a robot class that implements the shape interface. The robot consists of three squares representing its head, body, and bottom. Okay. And new class. Let's see, does that implement? Yeah, that implements shape interface. And we'll throw in the unimplemented methods for now. We have the squares. Head, body, and bottom. Top, middle, bottom. That little extra letter. Uh, constructor for the links of each of those three. Let's quickly do our, um, actually, we don't need to. Um, ideally, we should, um, we, we should have checks here for uh, invalid values, but it turns out the squares are going to do that for us. So this dot top equals new square top link, which will throw a legal argument exception um, if top length is, is, is negative, because Squares constructor will do that. So we don't have to uh, redo that here. We would have to write test that, that specify that uh, check our preconditions, however. care of our get area and get perimeter methods. So the get area would be the sum of the areas of those three. And the perimeter would be the same. Except for the perimeters there. So we turn top dot get perimeter plus middle dot get perimeter plus bottom dot get perimeter. And now we have a robot that implements shape interface. Uh, so it's got its get area and its get perimeter. Let's throw that into demo control. Let's see, and it wants us to add some robots to the list. Let's do that up here so that we can um, see what their um, their, their basic uh, stuff is. So
with that. Big robot. I like big robots. Okay, we'll add those to the list as well. Let's run it, see if those those things show up that way. There's our um, first robot, our second one, and there's our giant robot. Big area, big perimeter. Okay. Calculate the total area and perimeter of all the shapes in the list. So let's do a total area. Zero. Also equal zero. Oh, did I, have I already? Yeah, let's get rid of the clumsy white. So I'll shape interface things and sh our shapes list, total area plus equals shape dot get area, total perimeter. Plus equals shape dot get perimeter. So that should uh, add th those two things up. Let's just print out the result at the end. Um, being tidy, so I'm going to use string dot format. Says I've got a don't need that anymore. All right, let's see what happens. There we go. Calculates our total area and our total perimeter, and uh, we were able to do that all through uh, the uh, methods of the shape interface. All right, if you have questions about this, uh, let me know. Uh, I would take this solution and compare it to yours and make, um, make sure you, you've got things right. Uh, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but um, it does have to give similar numbers and, and, and similar calculations. So let me or, or, or your instructor know if you're having problems, and uh, we'll be glad to help. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you, and we'll, we'll see you next time.